Um, hello, so today we are going to do this problem called count number of bad pairs. It's part of uh, biweekly context 84. Um, so the problem says we get a <coughs> we get an array num of numbers um, and a pair of indices i, j is a bad pair if i is smaller than j and the difference between j and i is different than the difference between the number at j and the number at i. And the goal of the problem is to return the total number of bad pairs, right? Um, so essentially, for every two indices where the first one is smaller, we want the difference between the indices to be different than the, differ than the difference between the values. So if we take this example here, um, let's see what happens. So we have um, zero and one, so the pair this one and this one. The difference between the indices is one, but the difference between the value is minus three. So it's different, so that's a bad pair. Same thing with zero, two. Smaller, zero smaller than two. The difference um, between the values is minus one, between these is two, so it's bad. And we keep counting and we get five at the end. Um, if you get something like this here, where every number is the previous one plus one, then there is no bad pair because the difference two minus one, that's zero. Uh, and then one mi th that's one, and then one minus zero, that's one as well. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it uh, for the problem. Now let's see how we can solve it. Um, okay, so let's see how we can solve this. Um, so the description of a bad pair is i smaller than j, and um, j minus i is different than the number at position j minus the number at position i. So actually, we can try to simplify this. So what this, or convert it. So this is equivalent to j minus nums at position j, right? So we just put this here and put i over here. Is different than i minus the number at position i, right? So this is the definition of a bad pair, right? So w one, and this is of course with i smaller than j. Now, one thing to note here, let's say we have an array, right? And then we are looking at position j here, right? So this is the rest of the array, and this is the rest of the array here, right? How do we s know how many, how many bad pairs are here? F g to the left. How many bad pairs that contain g, right? So basically, how many i's? Uh, will give us bad pairs here. Well, it's enough to know, we know the count overall is j, so the number of elements overall is j, right? Because starting from zero to j, the number of elements up to j minus one is j. If we take j minus the number of bad pairs, we get the number of good pairs, and good pairs is just the reverse. i is still smaller than j, but here we have equal, okay? So this would mean here is that to know what are the bad pairs, we can just take j minus the number of the good pairs. And it's easy to, why is it easier to find the good pairs, right? Because it, the, the relationship is equal. So as we traverse, we can just put i minus number of i for every index i in this range. We can put, put the value in the map and then when we are at j, we can just check, is there an occurrence of this already? And how many times did it occur? How many times did it occur? That's the number of good pairs. And so we can just do j minus the number of good pairs to get the number of ba bad pairs constructed with from all the indices before j and j, right? And if we do this for every index in the array, we, ca we, ma uh, we make every index of the array j, and then check if there is an i before th that creates a bad pair with it. Then we just sum all of them and return the, the result, right? So that's pretty much what we can do here. Um, so the main idea is first take this formula, flip it so that it's j minus number of j different than i minus number of i, and then realize that actually bad pairs is just the total number of pairs uh, so the total number of possible pairs with j minus the number of 
good pairs and it's easy to find good pairs because we just need equal so we just need to find the same number of occurrences of um, of j minus numbers of j right because it's equal um, yeah so that's pretty much the idea that we are going to implement so let's see how it works um, okay so let's implement this solution here um, so we need first to get the length of the number of elements right and we need to have a map that will contain the the previous occurrences of i minus of i uh, of number at position i minus i so this would be we will have it initialize it to zero so we can just do int in python here and now we need to count the overall number of bad pairs um right so bad pairs and we return that at the end so we go we go through all the numbers and we check right so what are the good pairs uh, good pairs are just the number of occurrences of j because remember good pairs is when a i minus i is equal to a j minus j so the number of those that's the good pairs so good pairs with j right so all the i's that have a g a create a good pair with with j um, and now um, bad is just bad pair with j that's just the total number which of pairs which is j we said from 0 to j minus 1 that's j minus the number of good pairs right and then the overall bad pairs we need to add the bad pairs with j right and now we need to update the map for future values so we need to increase this by one right because we just found a j minus j we ju just found the j value here um and that's pretty much it right um Okay, so it seems like this should work. Oh, sorry, this is not A, this is nums. And same thing here. And this should work. Yep. And to clean it up a little bit, we actually, we can just replace this here, right? And then we don't need to create this variable. We can just put this here and that should be it. We can submit. Okay, so that passes test cases. Now, in terms of time complexity, this is O of n, right? Uh, time. So overall, um, we have O of n time here. In terms of space, we also have O of n space because of this map here. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this problem. Um, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and see you on the next one. Bye.